Here we are on XL 10 Minute Leaders Live. My name is Graham Brown, showcasing and sharing the journeys and stories of leaders in their different forms, technology, business, society. As you know, a key part of all of the above is communication, sales being a major part of that. Help us understand that world, navigate it through a little bit better for us. Rob Elliott joins us all the way from Australia today. Rob, welcome to the show. G'day, Graham. How you going, mate? Very good. Looking forward to our chat. A man who is passionate about sales and what I really appreciate is somebody who owns that space in the sense that there's a lot of stigma associated with sales, isn't there? But somebody who calls themselves a salesperson is proud to know what drives business. So there's no shirking of your title there. I can't, can't run away from it. Been doing it for over 30 years and that's what I'm known for. 30 years. All right. Well, let's dig in. We've got 10 minutes. You ready? Go for it. Should I ask what's on your business card there? Does it say sales guy? It uh, could have. It says sales and business coach there, Grant. <laughs> I want to know 30 years ago, what was the first thing you ever sold? First thing I ever sold 30 years ago was a schooner of Coke with a packet of chips. A schooner of Coke with a packet of chips? Yeah, I was working was in my selling? parents' pub. Right. Were you working behind the bar or in the restaurant? No, I was behind the bar. It's when you're the owner's son, you get to do everything. And oh. uh, that was that was what I had to do. What did you learn about sales in that those days, those heady days when you're kicking off your career that you now coach people in? Are they still applicable, those lessons? You know what? What I learned back there from my parents is still the foundation of all good people in sales today. And that mm. was straight up relationship selling. You had a very short period to get the trust of someone who'd had a couple of beers on the other side of that counter and you had to build a relationship incredibly quick because if you didn't, they either didn't come back to the pub or they probably threw something at you. Mm. It's a skill, isn't it, that we tend to feel that we've got to get the deal, we've got to get the product, but you're taking a much more organic and long-term approach with customers. I think people, I've always said it and people have said it everywhere, people buy people. They don't buy the product. If they can get to trust you and you can get them and build a relationship with them, they'll buy anything out of you. Hmm. But you also got to be true. You've got to be true to yourself. You can't, as we call it, bullshit. People pick that up very quick. Uh, so I say to people, be who you are, build the trust, get them to know you, build that relationship. And you can do it in 30 seconds. And you can do it over months. It doesn't matter. Today... 10 years ago, 30 years ago, it's still the same. So how do I do that? I'm a business owner, for example, yeah. and I need to get sales to make payroll. Yeah. That's the base economics of business. Yeah. So is there something I should be doing in between that? I.e., If I'm talking to you as a, a potential buyer, am I having to back off a little bit? Do I have to kind of park the sales a little bit? I don't know how, is it part of the sales process doing the getting to know you or is it, it a it thing is. we need to do before it? I think the best thing anyone can do is we've been given two ears and one mouth for a reason. And that's exactly how much you should talk when you're talking to a customer. Three, twice as much for the ears or only one through there and ask them questions that will let them come to you, will give you all the answers. If you know your product and you are confident in what you're selling, a customer will tell you what they're looking for. And if you acknowledge what they say to you, you build trust because they think, oh, Shivers, he knows what I'm talking about. He understands my problem. And then you can offer them a solution. It can just be the nicest shirt that will look best on you because you're going out on Saturday night to the right car that they're going to use to drive on a trip. If you listen and respond with a solution, you've got them forever and they'll come back and price won't even come into it. Hmm. What's a good question to ask then as a salesman, saleswoman, salesperson? Sorry. Salesperson. Cool. Yeah. Depending on the situation, uh, you can phrase this anyways. It could be, well, so what's your biggest problem today or what's your biggest issue today? Or how can I help you today? It's hmm. all the same question asked three different ways. And then you just sit there and say nothing. Pause and let them talk. What do you think of the idea of closing then? When I started in sales, closing mm. was always kind of like the strong arm close yeah. that you had the, the half Nelson close, even that was something, you know, <laughs> where you get somebody like this, you know, behind mm. the back mentally, 
Yeah. Is that still appropriate today, that idea of closing? Do you still close? How does it work now? You still close. It depends what industry you're in. If it's a one-off sale, you're selling a used car, you have no morals, no nothing, and you just want to get that sale out the door, you can use those pressure tactics using things like NLP and other things to get that customer to buy something they really don't want. But anyone who was looking for a repeat customer, anyone who is true to themselves won't use that. If you've done and answered the questions all the way along to their solution, they'll close for you. They, they will turn and say, thank you, so much. that's exactly what I need. So you don't mm. need to close. Mm. But if you go for the jugular, and we've all done it, we've all got excited and just gone bang for the solution and not listened to them or straight up pushed them and it goes away. They walk out the store, they hang up the phone. It comes with experience. It comes with making heaps of mistakes. And sometimes it can be as simple as, well, is there anything else I can ask you today? Anything else I can help you with today? And they'll go, no, okay, so are you in a position to buy today? Or can I take that to the cash register for you? Once you've gotten to the cash register with that shirt, you've got them. It's horses for courses and people know exactly what they're doing. They've just got to be patient and go with your gut, not with your head, and you'll know when to ask. What do you do then when somebody says, oh, can you send me something? Can you send me the brochure? Yeah, okay, no worries. I can send you the brochure. Is there any information you need specifically that I can include with the brochure that will help you make a decision? Hmm. Narrow their focus. And then you'll know by that answer if they're wasting your time or not. And if they say, no, not really, they're wasting your time. You send them a brochure and you don't bother anymore. Hmm. But if they're saying the price card, the price table, then you know maybe they're a bit more serious. Yeah. Right? Or you haven't done your job in selling the... Uh, the benefits or how good that product or that service is. It's mm. it's always got to come back to you. You're responsible for informing your customer. They're not, it's not their fault if they don't know or they don't see value on what you're trying to sell them. In your career, have there been items, services, products, ideas, which were quite easy to sell and ones which are really hard to sell? Is it, does it make your life difficult when you have a hard product or can you sell anything? Look, strictly speaking, if you've been in industry, any industry a long time and you know the basics of sales, you can sell anything. But if, you, if it's something you absolutely love and you are passionate about, you don't sell it. You just, it, just, it just happens. And you don't need training in it. If you know your product and you're really 100% committed, and that can be for raising money for charity, it can be a product, it can be a service. If you're truly passionate about it, just that comes over in your voice. You light up on stage, you light up in front of them, and a customer knows mm. straight up that you are really into this and you love what you're doing. Mm. You've got to have the energy, haven't you? That oh, one, it reflects on the customer, everything in the, I in have, the relationship. I have, I've made the call when I've had a bad day and I've just gone home because mm. customers pick it up straight away. They'll look at you going, you're not having a good day, are you? Yeah. And the best time to say that is, you know, I'm not. And the good customers say, well, why don't you come back on another day when things are going better? You say, thank you very much. Because you'll lose customers, you'll burn leads, or you could cost yourself a lot of money. I've worked with a lot of salespeople, and I've been surprised some of the best ones are use a lot of humour in their sales, mm -hmm. whether they're actually being funny or they're just more lighthearted, not in a clowning around way. No. Nah but not in a very high pressure, serious way. Mm. And I'm amazed by how many deals those guys got, but purely by the fact they were enjoying themselves doing it. And I think the customers loved it too. You know, they felt they yeah. weren't under pressure. Look, you can use humor to relax the situation, but these days there are so many people out there that are so precious that using humor, unless you know that customer incredibly well, can backfire on you because what you and I may think is funny, someone else yeah. might not, and you might offend them, and you don't mean to. Different nationalities, different ethnicities, that what we say means something totally different to them. Hmm. You've got to be That's so exactly. careful. I mean, if I have to use humour, I'll put myself down because hmm. then it's safe because the only one I'm offending is myself, and quite often they'll laugh at that. 
Mm. But uh, you just if you're good at it, do it. If you're not good at it, don't try it. So last question I want to ask you, just a challenge, mm. is the Wolf of Wall Street question, which is sell me <laughs> this pan. How, yeah. What is the right answer to that? Because when you think about this is often used, isn't it? And yeah. I don't think it's a great interview question for a job, no. for sure, because it's not what you do. But That's how right. would you deal with a situation like that? If you were placed in that situation, Rob, sell me this pen. Can I have your autograph, Graham? <laughs> sure. Thanks, mate. Oh, I don't have a pen. Oh, here we go. Done. There you go. I think that's how he did it in Wolf of Wall Street, wasn't it? So Actually, I don't remember. Create a need. But... Look, SARS is about creating a need, solving, giving them a solution and making them feel comfortable. It's pretty simple. Yeah, it sounds like you know what you're doing and you're enjoying yourself, Rob. And what do you feel about how things have progressed in the last 18 months? A lot of businesses moved remotely, mm -hmm. uh, we're yep. working remotely, and you know we're doing a lot of more communication like this mm -hmm. now. A lot yes. more Zoom, a lot more Google Meets and so on. How does that work with the sales process? Is that affecting it? Does it mean we have to change our strategies or are still the fundamentals the same? Look, I think it's it's changed everything. People, I do what we call is review the sales chain. The sales chain is everyone in your business is part of the sales process. So we now have to throw out everything we've learned, everything we've done, and look at the process from the very first time we interact with a customer to when we deliver that product to the customer and, of course, a week later when you're asking for feedback because how we interact, how we do business has all changed. You can have the best product with the most awesome website on the fantastic value for money and it turns up in a battered brown box. You'll never get another sale and they'll never tell anybody to buy from you again. So what I would say to anyone is now review your whole sales chain, every person, every area, the whole lot because it has changed and it will continue to change. That for a fact we know. Yes. Rob Elliot, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. Where do we find out more about you? Pretty easy, I'm on LinkedIn under my name, Rob Elliot. Uh, Instagram, Rob J Elliot, or if you wanna make it nice and easy, robelliot.com.au. Rob, thanks for joining us on Excel 10 Minute Leaders Live today. Really appreciate it.